Yeah, first of all, uh, thank you very much, uh, Dan and Sam, for um, giving me this opportunity. And uh, for uh, any future students, parents, and current students, if you want to know more about me and about the college, please do contact me with my email or give me a call. I would love to talk to you and share my experience and my thoughts about engineering. Uh, I grew up in South India. There is a city called Chennai. I grew up in, uh, in a suburb of the city, Chennai. Uh, I went to school there uh, pretty much. Uh, my parents were really, um, I would say middle class, or maybe lower middle class when, when I was young. My father was a, a government official. Both my parents were just high school graduates. So uh, I'm, I'm a first generation student in that sense. Uh, but both valued education a lot, uh, big time. Um, my father, uh, even though he started as a, just out of high school, he started as a government official with typewriting and uh, um, and as a stenographer, they used to call him, a typist and a stenographer. He was able to reach the highest levels of the government because of hard work and persistence. Uh, my mother was extremely good in math. Actually, I very distinctly remember, uh, she, even though she was a homemaker, stayed at home, but extremely smart and actually I would say even smarter than my father in many ways, uh, but she was also very entrepreneurial. She ran a lot of businesses uh, using as kids. We were five siblings. We were doing business uh, as young kids selling milk products because we had a cattle farm. We used to grow vegetables and sell um, charcoal, cement, uh, clothing, books, anything that is uh, in vogue at the time she used to sell them. But for my high school, I used to walk about three miles to go to the school. It was a good school, but you had to walk three miles up and three miles down every day. Uh, the kids were really hard on me because I was really good. At the same time, there was a clannish kind of a situation, right? Uh, people were uh, giving you a hard time. Uh, so there used to be math challenges. I distinctly remember I had my own kind of uh, group, uh, disciples, if you want to call them. Uh, and the other team had their own leader and a disciple. Every morning I go there, they will throw a geometry problem or a, a calculus problem or something at me, and then uh, I would take it seriously and handle it. <laughs> so it was very interesting type of uh, lifestyle. Uh, so I had a lot of great uh, uh, high school teachers, um, but the math and science teachers were really excellent. I loved them. I loved them. And the teachers used to root for me. They wanted me, me to be number one in the state, number one in uh, high school, but I was not. But they really supported me a lot. India, it used to be a system uh, 11 plus 1. That is, there is a one year of pre-university, everybody attends, and then goes to, applies to colleges, right? That's how it was done. It's a British system. That's how it operated. It's called pre-university or pre-technical uh, education. So my father said at the time, you don't go to pre-university. I want you and your brother to go to pre-technical program. It's almost like it gives you an opportunity to go to divide tax. You could go get a associate degrees in a, in a skill, not an engineering skill, not an engineering degree, like a technology degree, if you want to call it. Basically, the, my father's idea was, I want you guys to get a job, right? Uh, because we were really, my father was ready to try, retire. So I went to that school. I stood number one in, uh, in that polytechnic. It was called Central Polytechnic in Madras. I was number one in the class. I had 100 on 100 in physics and math, and uh, chemistry was 98 or 99. I was able to get into engineering. And at the same time, uh, India has some special schools like MIT of United States. Actually, sometimes they say even better than MIT and Harvard. These are called Indian Institute of Technologies. These are very special schools. Uh, I think India started with five of them. And you have to compete for, uh, to get into the engineering programs, you need to compete nationally. It is an entrance exam. It's not based on your high school grades or uh, this 98, 99, doesn't matter. And they test you on, uh, on a, in, in a national level. Usually people prepare for this for about four or five years. They start in the eighth grade and prepare for four years and sit for this test. It is in math, physics, chemistry, and English. And in Central Polytechnic, I had a very good professor. He used to challenge me with a lot of math problems. Just for me, like uh, out of his own interest, he would give me 10, 20 problems every day. Really like a BA in math or a MA in math type of problems, right, As a, to a 12th grader. That's how he trained me. So I did the test. Uh, I remember doing the test. It was uh, four hours for math, four hours for physics, four for chemistry, 
and four for English. So two days exam, right? And in the math test, they give you 20 questions. These are questions not from your high school. They are usually, it will be a combination of calculus, geometry, and something else. It's always not one concept. It will be three, four concepts embedded into one program. Uh, you have to really, really dig into it and understand it. I remember the first, uh, when I sat through the math portion, or 20 questions, they ask you to write one question in one page. They want you to separate the pages out. So I attempt the first 13 questions. I couldn't do any of them. There were 13 pages half full. <laughs> uh, I was kind of discouraged and then I kept on plowing through it. Uh, finally, I was able to do probably 10 or 12. They expect you to do 12 of them, I think. Out of, uh, out of 100,000 students who attempted in India, uh, my sector was 250, I was in the 250. So to me, uh, in nationally, I was uh, 1008th rank out of 1500 students who they chose. So that was pretty good start because that gives you uh, confidence, even though you went to schools where you went to government schools, really not well known or anything like that, and uh, not private schools, and, and you do well. At that time, that's when I knew, so okay, yes, I can do engineering, I can do physics. And that is where it started. And uh, I went to IIT Madras uh, for about five years. My degree program was five, five years. People complain about 120 credits. I took uh, 170 credits. I did eight semesters of math, four some five semesters of physics, five, four semesters of chemistry. I could have sat for uh, pre-med in this country because I knew organic chemistry really well. <laughs> These kids can play chess blind. They can close their eyes. I'm not kidding. Uh, there'll be guys will be sitting against one another and they'll be saying, oh, uh, PK4. I don't know what the hell PK4 is. They, these guys move it. They hear it and they imagine the board where the coin, coin is going. And these guys used to be cutthroat. Really cutthroat. Actually, <laughs> incredibly cutthroat. So it was really painful for me to go out and even open my mouth. You know what I'm saying? I was not confident at all. Even though I entered pretty much close to the 250th rank of the 250 people, uh, after the first two semesters, I was top 10 in the in the in the 250 students. And so that gave me a lot of confidence. Then people had respect for me, and of course, once you have confidence, you start to do really, really well. I came out as gold medalist uh, in metallurgical engineering. I, I was number one in the class, uh, so it was pretty good. It it was good experience. But you have you have to fight these things, right? When you when you are in a situation, you can't just go into a shell. You go into a shell, figure out how to handle it and handle it. And, and, and that, is, that IIT gave me that opportunity. Of course, you go to IIT, getting admitted to a good school in the United States with a scholarship is not a problem. That's how I gave, came to Purdue University. So my original degree was a Bachelor of Technology in Metallurgical Engineering. And then when I came to, that's from IIT Madras. And then I came to Purdue University to do a master's degree in metallurgical engineering, uh, which I finished in 85, 1985, 83 to 85. And then I switched very gutsily, I switched to electrical engineering to do a PhD. The job market when I graduated in 1989 was not very good. It was uh, actually, the country was slowly going into a recession. Actually, 1990, 1991, we went into some kind of a recession. Job market was terrible. Uh, so I applied, you guys won't believe it, uh, I applied to 250 places. But luckily, uh, after five, six months, I had five job interviews, uh, uh, two universities, University of Alabama, Tuscaloosa, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and then three job interviews with uh, IBM in uh, Pukis Poughkeepsie, New York, and a uh, job interview with VLSI Technology in San Jose. Um, I think of this, I got three jobs. Of the five interviews, I got three jobs. One was UNLV and two from IBM. I had to think about it, whether to take an industry job or a teaching job. Um, I remembered my parents and they said, you should be a teacher, you're good at it. So I decided, okay, this is a great opportunity. It's a school which is starting and let us go do something about it. So that's how I came to UNLV.